We Are Games at Breda University of Applied Science in a town called Breda in the south of the Netherlands. We have a four-year games program started in 2006 and a one-year master. We have a team of over 30 games industry experienced lecturers working in a game studio simulated environment, bringing together all the disciplines of art, design, programming, production, audio, and business to make great games and prepare students for the top game development studios. In the four main game development labs, we have professional office furniture, second screens, access to all the various industry software such as Perforce for version control and Handsoft for production from Perforce's free educational program, Jira and Confluence from Atlassian's free educational program, and we use communication platforms like Discord, Slack and Microsoft Teams. We have PlayStation Development Kit hardware as part of Sony's PlayStation First program and cannot wait until PS5 development kits arrive. There are dedicated rooms for VR, green screen, audio recording, life drawing and technical drawing. We try to keep up with the latest VR and AR hardware and ensure access to mocap systems such as the XN suit. We even have projects where students build their own hardware creating experimental game controllers or where researchers build a complete photo scanning rig for use in student games and research. We are completely project based and over the years the teams range in size from 5 up to 40. We are also a Houdini certified school, as Procedural has always played a big role. We were actively working with Procedural and the UDK for many years, and when Epic open source UE4 in 2014, we made it the core of most of our projects. Suddenly we could learn and contribute at all levels, and this was especially beneficial for our programmers. So in our first year, our students often impress. We want them to release games on itch.io, and to get feedback from communities of players, and to even start to experience what community management means. Three projects are in their own disciplines of programming, art, and design and production. The students come together for the first time to finish the year with a cross-discipline project where they all work together. This forms the foundation. As an example, our design teacher, Alan Jack, looks for ways to bring what are normally separate courses on design theory, blueprinting, and level design combines them into steps of making a game in UE4. This holistic approach, where theory, practice and thought process are combined into one package, produces games like Office Hustle, and by releasing sometimes you have surprises like PC Gamer featuring it. We look forward to creating such educational material for UE5. In Year 2 we have two discipline projects and two cross-discipline projects. Trivinity is an example of a programming discipline project where C++ is used to create a new engine and tools. You can see Dravinity leveraging procedural track creation tools developed, as well as needing to be cross-platform on both PC and PS4. Given our project-based approach, we give what we call creative briefs to students. The brief motivates students to push latest features being released. Temple of Giants is a great example of where Niagara was put into action for their effects throughout the game. The Roaring Twenties is an example of a year two art project which focuses on a cinematic output, all in engine. We encourage artists to discover and leverage as many features as possible in UE4 and for them to understand how art tools like Maya be best integrated. In Captain Starshot, the tool that created the environment is seeded with different assets to create the environment for Shattered Lights. The result is two very different games, but very usable results. Shattered Lights pushed non-Euclidean space. It had special UE4 editor plugins to make it easier for designers to deal with level design on spaces that fold in on each other and also change depending on the state of the game. Shattered Lights production quality results and the fact the game makes you feel like you're in a big VR world despite being in a small room is a testament to great tools, technology and design. But all the students were delighted to see the response from game players, including YouTubers. Even one fell out of VR in horror. Oh, shit! Yeah. Okay! Okay! Ooh, you all Speaking of falling out of VR, we had one of our own professors fall out of a virtual window of the Red Stair, inspired by Alfred Hitchcock's rear window. The immersion was amazing. You could order pizza on the old rotary dial phone, have it delivered, and virtually eat it. The winning point here was that you could interact with everything. 
something that in UE5 might give you more time to pay attention to, and how we approach narrative design, both with the story environment and the NPCs you engage with. How can we take these more beautiful UE5 environments and interweave them with an experience to leave players speechless? We do want our students to really push the technology so they can be sharing insights with industry. As an example, before Epic released the Fortnite networking improvements for UE4, the Survivors Project was crafting a snowy country and western battle royale. They managed to push the networking and gameplay sessions successfully right up to the 100 player goal. We were proud. They hosted many live alpha play tests that even included people from Codemasters joining in on occasions, using a Discord server to manage play test groups and play waves, as well as these servers that are active in the cloud. They combined play tests with player analytic tools, integrating with PlayFab to handle the lobby and matchmaking, and successfully brought a lot of technology together to deliver this large world game. Sky is a great example of where a flying game became a relaxing exploration of a beautiful environment. During their development, the team suffered a lot of setbacks, even swapped engines. The team ended up relying on just designers and artists. Now we look at the success of one of the best games of that year, a testament to UE4 and what a strong group of artists and designers could complete and release. And it now has 98% overwhelmingly positive score on Steam. And this highlights that we want to provide the room and freedom for students to experiment without fear diminishing their creativity. We often end up with teams that can become quite dysfunctional. We encourage them to learn from this and the safety of the educational environment and to find solutions to make the team productive again. We have study coaches in each year helping students to cope with different demands and time management. There are student counselors available for the more serious challenges some students may face. In the end, the constant teamwork is about creating teams where disciplines understand and help get the best out of each other, where all the rough edges are given a chance to be smooth and for the true game development professional to emerge in an environment of diversity and respect. With a game like Aina, where the team had 40 members and they were aiming for AAA quality, the producer really has a challenge. And at the same time, we want them to actively avoid crunch. This is where the team structure and leads become more important. Whether they try feature teams or discipline teams, they can experiment to learn the pros and cons of various approaches. Einer experienced massive downscopes, but ended up with over 300,000 downloads, and they still had time to insert a few funny Easter eggs. Virtual reduction has become a big feature and is an area for our students to master. With UE5, it is even more likely that film and game might emerge from a single development pipeline of the future. Umoya was a really great example of this, where both a short film and game were created from the same world. Could game development benefit more from production tools like Shotgun and F-Track? These may be things that our students need to embrace to manage these future pipelines. Carrie ended up with hours of gameplay, a complete composed album of music, and well beyond anything we expected. Ensuring the use of build servers and potentially automated testing are just some of the strategies our students will employ. But how do you keep the product quality as the gameplay experience time increases and the worlds become much larger? How do you make it all look like it belongs together? We also want to support students through the commercialization process when creating a games company. Stitchheads is one alumni company that is now onto their next game title. They benefit from the games incubator where we partnered with the Dutch Game Garden. Their title can bounce was released on both Steam and PS4. And one of our oldest alumni companies, Split Polygon, went a more difficult pathway of developing a complete game engine for the game Interstellar Rift, where once you construct your spaceship, you can fly around in it and have space battles as well as first person battles. We do try to find students' commercial support. One means is our incubator space on the ground floor, but it's great to see Unreal Engine licensing free up to one million in gross revenue, a marketplace that gives developers a greater return and the opportunity to obtain an epic mega grant. All in all, getting the games into the hands of players is important for student learning. The feedback often gives a boost in motivation to the team and really does help to see how playable and fun the game really is. This also happens when we have the game industry visit and play the games as well as review student portfolios. Sometimes, no matter how much feedback we have given, it's not until someone from industry says it that the students truly take it on board. We have goals of having all our students experience part of their studies overseas. We also have lecturers spending time in companies to renew skills and knowledge. I hope you have found this an informative 10 minutes. Thank you.